All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually got a legendary individual calling in straight out of the straight out of Motor City of Detroit, Michigan, straight out of the 313. We got Lil Drugstow right here, live on the line, man. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. How y'all feeling tonight? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I gotta say, first and foremost, man, I've been a fan of your work for a long time, man, so it's an honor just to have a Motor City legend like yourself taking over the Canadian Airways this evening. I appreciate it, 100%. And I gotta ask, man, how's everything going out, out there with yourself out there out there in Detroit, man? I've, I've been seeing the states has really been starting to open back up. Yeah, everything open back up, but you still gotta be a little careful with your mask and, you know what I'm saying, stay... Because the schools and stuff, they all open, everything open back up. You just got to be a little careful. Yeah, it's, it's the same way down here in Canada. I actually just heard they're actually reopening shows uh, to full capacity, actually, down here in Canada. Down here in Ontario, at least. So hopefully we, we can get a little drugstore down here for a concert, man. Definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> But I know you're a busy guy, Drug, so I'm going to dive right into this broadcast. But i got to ask, first and foremost, man, taking you back to the, very, to the very beginning, what made you decide to get into the music industry initially? Because your roots run so deep within hip-hop. Yeah, uh, my daddy. My daddy is a music dude. He's still DJ to this day. He played the flute, the bongos. My daddy kept the music going. He just... He kept it in field, and he had me curious from a kid. Yeah, I was a kid around it, so I was curious when I grew up. And I got two other brothers, and all three of us do it. And I got to say, man, have you ever actually collaborated with your brothers as well, or do you guys just kind of do your own separate uh, separate musical stuff? Oh, no, no. We got like two, three songs, but... We both heavy into it. We got to look out for them, too, the bass mafia. Yeah, we heavy into it. But we, whenever we get a chance, we do, because it's my real brothers. But both of us be doing our own thing. But, yeah, we got a couple songs out there. And also, as well, man, uh, April 25th of 2012, you actually released the album uh, mixtape titled Street Certified that was actually hosted by Detroit's own DJ King David. I was wondering, what is the story behind that iconic record? And, of course, is it still available to actually be streamed or purchased today? Yeah, that's on that tip. I think it's on that tip, yep. And me and me and King David, we go way back. We were some knuckleheads in the neighborhood. But we still always love the music, so... Whenever we got a chance, we caught back up, and then we re-released that, and then he hosted it for me, and we put it out. We've been kicking it and, and locked in back with the music ever since. And then one thing I have to ask, man, because I know a lot of individuals, uh, unfortunately right now, within hip-hop at least, we're kind of in a singles era where individuals aren't really putting out albums or mixtapes anymore. It's just mainly just straight-up singles. I was wondering, man, as a veteran within the music industry, do you think mixtapes should still be a thing, or do you think the mixtape mix tape should just be a thing of the past? Nah, I think mixtapes should be a thing. Like, now it seems to me that you got to build it up. So I drop, I play it that way, like the 2022 way, instead of playing it the old-fashioned way. I get him a verse or two hot two-minute songs, and then build it up when it get hot, and then drop a mixtape for an album. But yeah, it, it, it's still important. It's definitely still important. And I, I just going back to Street Certified here for a moment, do you think there will ever actually be a volume two at all? Because I gotta say, that record was absolutely phenomenal, man. The one record I really enjoyed off that was City Streets featuring, I think it was uh, Carche Rich. Yeah, yeah, that's my family, too. That's wow, That's Craig. That's my family, too. But, yeah, yeah, now that you said it, I'm going to get on the phone with King David after we get off the interview. Hey, well, King David, if you're if you're listening, man, let's make it happen, man. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Definitely. But also, as well, man, you were actually affiliated with Third Block Records out there in Detroit. I was wondering, how did yourself and Third Block get connected? And, of course, what is it like actually just working alongside that phenomenal, legendary label? See, Third Block is really our neighborhood, our, our street where we come from. So, 
what I did, I was, you know, I was into the music. I took all the guys. We still doing knucklehead stuff to say, hey, we got to do this. We got to put it together. And we actually put together a house. Everybody came up out the streets or whatever they was doing and came together and put together an album. And it was a classic album. And, and I got to say as well, I want to say my, my apologies on that. I always thought uh, Third Block was actually a label. I didn't know if it was actually where all you guys came from. I thought you guys were just a collective of artists that actually formed a label. No, it's both. It's both. That's just what, it's our street. But that's what we decided to name the label after our street. And also as well, um, I remember back in like 2017 criteria that you actually took the social media to try and bring peace and unity actually between Detroit and Chicago during their big hip hop rap beef rivalry. I was wondering what actually made you decide to step in and speak up, man. Cause I think personally, man, you did, you did a lot of good in that terrible situation, really trying to bring peace and unity to both cities. If, if, it was because it was a lot of people just, you know, a lot of people just jump into stuff just to get famous or or just to get known. And it's really deeper than that. It's like people really losing their lives behind that. And I I was back and forth from Chicago with my cousins out there, my cousins out there. So I ain't had no animosity to them, and I was from Detroit. It just was certain people had their own thing going on, so... They should handle that instead of bringing a whole two whole cities into it that's really on the on the gangster stuff that they say they own. That that ain't gonna turn out good. And I gotta say, I definitely agree with that, man. Some individuals think you know a hip hop beef is just strictly hip hop, but sometimes it is. But sometimes it really is much bigger than bigger than that, like you said. And individuals, unfortunately, you know, pass away. Yeah, definitely gets deeper, definitely. And, and I gotta ask, since then, like obviously I haven't heard any much, any much about it. Like, has has that rivalry actually died down by now? Yeah, yeah, it, that that went away. It was the two individuals, but it went away. It it definitely went away. If there's any Detroit or Chicago thing going on, it's probably between the people that is going on between, but not as far as Detroit versus Chicago. Nah, I got a lot of people in Chicago. And also as well, one year later, uh, summer of 2018, uh, July 10th to be exact, you released a phenomenal album titled The Cook-Up. I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about this record, and of course, do you actually have any hard copies available to be purchased for the old school listeners that do still love CDs? Unfortunately, I don't, but I did that uh, EP with uh, my family, Knock em Out Punchy. He, I think he still produced. You can go look him up on, on Instagram. But we knocked out five bangers real quick. Got a mix down by my guy, JR. JR BT. He real known, too, mixing engineer. But, yeah, we knocked that out. I like that, too. That was a classic. And it's still available on the on, for streaming, like on YouTube. And it's on YouTube, if I'm mistaken. But digital, I mean, hard copies, I didn't get none printed up. And I got to say as well, the one one of my go to songs off off that off that short but phenomenal EP is actually "Everything Is a Go." Man, I I think that was a perfect way to actually end such a phenomenal masterpiece of an EP. I appreciate that. I really do. It. I put a lot of work into my stuff, and I, I just wanted to come out all right. You know what I'm saying? I critique myself a lot before I put it out. So if I put it out then that's 100% what I want to put out. If they like it or not, that's a difference. But that's me, and that's how I'm coming, and that's what's coming from me. And also as well, as we, as we talked about a few moments ago about DJ King David, another legendary DJ within the, street, uh, within the streets of Detroit that you actually have had the opportunity to work with is uh, the one and only DJ Butter. I was wondering, how did yourself and D12's very first DJ initially get connected? And of course... What is it like working alongside Butter? It's like uh, we got connected through King David. We haven't actually did a project or anything together, but we both from a little uh, area in, in Detroit called Highland Park. So we got a lot of roots because he used to uh, I don't, he used to DJ for another group 
that I, a, a guy I went to high school with named Reg. So we was all like in the same little circle. And I got to say as well, you know, maybe one day you guys will actually do something together, man. Because I, I got to say, he is he is an absolute beast on the turntables, and you're an absolute beast on the microphone. I really think if yeah. you guys come together, you could really take over Detroit, man, for real. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And also as well, man, going into this year, May 17th, you actually released the phenomenal record titled Mask Up. I was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about that phenomenal record. And, of course, what was the creative process behind that? Because I do know during the whole COVID-19 pandemic, some individuals had phenomenal, just phenomenal, like, creativity, and some actually, unfortunately, lost it. Right, right, right. Yeah, that, that it, it really was, it was a, a, a love, you know, dance on that, too, the, the uh, pandemic with masks up, but... That was me just going back in, like, I'm about to just put something back out here right now. Because, like you said, the, uh, everything was shutting down everything, so now it was time to work the Internet. And with the Internet, you can get everywhere. You can get 50 states, you can get overseas, everywhere you can get on the Internet. So it was time to work the Internet, so I had to put out a project that I can go on the Internet and work it. And I got to say, it, de it definitely came out phenomenal, man, you know? And like, the reason why I was bringing up the pandemic was because, you know, like I said, I'll, some individuals aren't really, like, with the internet sometimes. But I got to say, man, you definitely really worked that project, in my personal opinion. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. I try. I, be, I really try. I'm going to be honest, man. I, I do my majority of my stuff on the internet, and there's still stuff that I, that I actually still do not know about the internet that I actually find out. And I sit back and go, shit, man, I don't know how I don't know this. All right, right. That's what it, and it'd be so simple. You'd be like, man, I, I did not know that. I, I think it's just because technology is evolving so quickly at such a fast rate that, you know, some of us don't, some of us are on the same sites constantly and don't really explore. So then when we do actually explore, we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all it, and, and that's, 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 uh, Tommy said that because now that's how I do it. If it's something, I just go to Google, type it in, whatever it may be, and it, it come up. Something's going to come up. And also as well, uh, speaking of uh, something's going to come up, man, exactly today, October 30th, you actually dropped your brand new single featuring Big, Big Moses titled What We Doing. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a bit more about this brand new release, and of course, where can they actually purchase or stream it today? Oh, yeah, yeah, dropped it today, uh, featuring my bro Big Moses out there from AZ. Um, I got the beat from, I think it was 808 Chino. I wanted to drop it, so once I come on the interview, I can let some, everybody know that the new single out, and they can go check me out if they feel like, do their opinion, see if they like it or not. But yeah, it's hot. It's out there today. It dropped at twelve last night on all digital highlights. And I gotta ask as well, man. Like right here, right now, for the individuals that haven't had the opportunity to listen to it, I'm gonna be playing it immediately after this interview right here on ninety-seven point seven FM. So if this is our, uh, if this is the listener's very first time hearing it, what can they expect from this phenomenal track when I spin it here coming up momentarily? Okay, you got a hard beat. You got two guys that have been rapping for a minute, so we know how to bounce and play off each other. It's straight in, straight to go. Uh, my bro, Dane Grease, put a little tweak on it. Shout out to him. Uh, it's just fire. It's energy. It's like more of a West Coast town. They got the new energy type. It's going to be jumping. Y'all going to love it. And also as well, man, I have to ask, what is next for yourself? Little drugstore, man, is there anything we happen to miss during this broadcast? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on 97.7 FM this evening. Yeah, uh, I got my have a bunch of new stuff coming out. I just been in the studio with my bro, Rail, today. I'm dropping with him on his mud talk coming out. Uh, I'm just steady working, steady dropping. It's, like I said, this Instagram, you, you can drop when you want to, so... Look for a lot more music from me, a lot. And I'm going to start doing a lot more features. I just did a song, Full Court Press, featuring the game. Because of the internet, we ain't have to meet each other. Over social media and chit-chatting, got together. 
So y'all just hit the link in my bio. Go follow me on Instagram, L-I-L underscore D-R-U-G underscore S-C-O. promise y'all going to love it. Hey, man, I got to say, I'm definitely looking forward to those projects, man. It definitely sounds like 2022 is the year of Detroit's finest little drug stove. Man, I appreciate the love. I appreciate it. Y'all got a lot of blessings coming towards y'all. Hey, man, I definitely appreciate that, little man. But for now, man, I got to say, first and foremost, man, it definitely was an honor just to have you on the radio station Airwaves this evening, man. I hope you have a wonderful night out there in Detroit. And definitely, man, hopefully we can do this again sometime soon. Definitely. Love y'all. Most definitely, man. Have yourself a wonderful night. You too.